It's a brand new day. Let's teach your way. It's time for music play. Welcome back to the Music Play Minutes podcast. This episode is also available as a webinar with a handout and a PD certificate. All extra resources, including visual examples mentioned in this episode, can be found at workshops.musicplay.ca. As the leaves change and the air gets crisp, join Denise for spooky sounds and autumn activities. In this podcast, Denise Gagne will guide you through a collection of imaginative musical activities. We will explore the different activities on Music Play Online for your pre-K to middle school students. Let's make this autumn unforgettable through music, creativity, and the joy of learning. Welcome, everybody, to our Spooky Sounds webinar. And this is where we talk about um, what we have on Music Play Online for Halloween, or if you can't do Halloween, alternatives to Halloween that still have fun stuff in minor keys. And we have joining us today from our team, we have Danae, give us a wave. We have Michelle and we have Spencer and we have a special guest, Jane Lamb, who wrote some ORF arrangements that are really lovely and are on the website. And I'll be showing you where those new ORF arrangements are in this webinar. <clears throat> I am considerably croakier than I should be. I was on a lovely trip through Turkey for three weeks, sitting beside my sister who was coughing. And eventually, whatever she was coughing transmitted to me. So my voice is far from perfect, and it's never very good to begin with. I do have in the handout kind of my general order and showing you some of my favorites from the song list. So if I go into the song list... I can search for Halloween or I can search by title. But the one that I wanted to share was Magic Spell. It's yellow, so it's first grade, grade one. And this has always been a fun one. So I'll let you watch a little bit of the notation, then I'll go to the kids' demo. And then I always act out, so do actions with me. Cadabra, you're a bird, and now you're on the loose. And now the kids fly like a bird around the room, listening for the end of the section where they should come back and join me. I'm a very tricky witch, a spell I'll cast on you. I'll say the words and wave my broom, and you'll be something new. You could be a worm. Abracadabra, you're a frog. So now you hop like frogs. <clears throat> and this is good exercise for the kids. And now they be gathering up and coming back over by me and doing the actions and singing this part of the song with me. would gallop like horses around the room. So that uses the word witch, tricky witch. So if you can't do tricky witches in your school, in the general song list, there is a song called I Can Pretend. And it's got the same idea where the kids pretend to be something and it doesn't say anything about witches, which makes it doable for all kids in the classroom. Again, minor key, feel of Halloween. So 
you've got the idea with those two. Um, the one, if you can do Halloween in your school, uh, magic spell, and if you can't, I can pretend it's a really good alternative. So in the song list again, I'm going to go to costume fun. And this is in kindergarten, and it's a little singing game. I'm gonna use the notation slide and go full screen. So, I like to dress in costumes. It's so much fun for me. So look at what I'm doing and guess what I might be. So I can decide what I'm going to be and I'm going to be this. So I'm a bunny. If they guess correctly, someone else goes in the middle of the circle and we sing. I like to dress in costumes. It's so much fun for me. So look at what I'm doing and guess what I might be. I'm going to take a big swing. And guess what I am? I'm a golfer. I'm not really, but I can pretend. And so the kids get a chance to dramatize and have a little bit of fun with that. <clears throat> so that's costume fun, that's in kindergarten. Now I'm going to go to pre-K and I'm going to look up the bony skeletons. And again, we tried to use characters in the song that would be acceptable for all schools. My kids, when they made up verses, they added zombies to it, it was quite funny. So. The bony skeletons walk. Uh, let's look at the lyrics video for pre case. And push away and walk like the bony skeletons. The bony skeletons walk. The bony skeletons walk. would want the kids to make up their own verses. And I just laughed because these little pre-Ks that were four years old wanted to do zombies. The zombies walk. And so we did zombies. Um, I don't know which parents are letting their kids that are four years old watch zombie movies, but there was obviously enough of them that they all knew what zombies were. <clears throat> so kindergarten, Halloween Looby Loo is one that I have always really enjoyed. There's two ways you can play. I have my stretchy band, and you could have the kids make a circle with the stretchy band, or if you have a parachute, you can use the parachute. And Lisa and I did a no-touch demo during COVID, but obviously it's much more fun to play with the parachute. So whatever size parachute you can get, And then we put, put your bat wing in, put your bat wing out, turn yourself around, and then you pick up the parachute and walk with it. And then way up. If your students are a little bit too wild to be able to do it with the parachute, then um, by all means, go to the version where we just do the movements. And that is an alternative. It was done for COVID restrictions, but if you've got a really wild class and you think they're gonna go nuts if you give them the parachute, do the, um, do the alternative. Okay, grade four, I've got two songs that I really like a lot. One is Pass the Pumpkin. 
and I'll pull up the notation slide. And this one is just a simple little do re mi so la song. Pass the pumpkin round the room. Keep the beat while passing. When it stops, you take a turn. Clap it if you can. So I have a pumpkin. And in the pumpkin, I have rhythm cards. So I will employ a beat keeper to actually pass it and tap on each child's hand. I have found this way more successful than, um, than asking the kids to pass the container around. It just doesn't work very well when you pass the container. So I have a beat keeper that shows it, and at the end, they pull out a rhythm card. Now, I've got two levels of rhythm cards here. You choose the level that works for your kids. This is fourth grade. I, you know, your, your students might be long past TTs and Taws, or maybe not because these kids have gotten behind. So if your kids are ready for it, give them harder rhythms. I would have one child clap the rhythm, the class echo, and then we try and create a rhythm chain with it. It's actually quite fun to see the chain happen. So this is, this is using Taws and TTs to make the rhythm chain. And you can see how the kids have their hands outstretched. These kids were at a week-long camp. Some of them had reading ability, some didn't. This one didn't. She actually was quite weak. But the rest of the class clapped it for her. So she's number one in the chain. Now they do it again and add to the chain. Now he goes over and there's... And you try and see how how far the chain can extend. So that has always been a favorite. And if you want to do the song again in the year, it works with a Christmas stocking. Pass a stocking round the room, and you could put your rhythms in a stocking. Or at Easter time, pass a basket round the room, and you can do it with an Easter basket. So it's kind of a multi-purpose song. If you want to do it, there is an ORF arrangement with it. And if I was doing this with the ORF arrangement, I would probably add to it um, creating with the note cards so that the kids would create a B section with, with the note cards. So that's past the pumpkin in uh, grade four. And now I'm going to go back to the song list and I'm going to look up the bat song. Honestly, this is one of my favorite, favorite songs of all time. Kids love it. If you perform it, don't make the mistake that I did. Don't give every child a balloon. you add the sound effects with the balloon. Whoever's got the balloon lets it go and the balloons fly. Um, you have to be careful that nobody in your classes has latex allergies because that's what balloons are made out of. But if you have the okay, absolutely, it's a super fun song to do. So this is the interactive that you can do with the students. And then there is a printable version of this worksheet as well. So here is the printable version of the BATS worksheet. I'll make it full screen. 
And so this would be a, a nice supplemental act, activity or extension activity to do with your fourth grade if you teach them the bat song. Okay, I had the witch's cat on my list. The old gray cat is a really fun little singing game for the kids. And the witch's cat just puts it into a minor key. And why don't I have a kid's demo of that? If any of you do it and want to have your kids on the website, by all means, send us a kid's demo of this. So I'll use the notation video. So everybody sleeps and acts it in, acts it out. And then we pretend to be little mice. And if you're brave enough to do the chase, by all means, do the chase. If you're not brave enough or your kids are a little bit too wild to do the chase, just have them jump for that part or run in place for the chase, the chase part of it. So in pre-K, I have a wealth of spider songs. So we have Spider on the Floor. We have Little Miss Muffet. And then we have Eensy Weensy Spider. And we also have crisscross Cross Applesauce. And spiders, of course, <laughs> don't have anything to do with Halloween. So they're really cute. So spider on the floor, I found this lovely spider at a dollar store, and that's the one that I like to use. There's a spider on the floor, on the floor. And if you watch the kids' demo, I'm not gonna show it, all of it um, for us today. But with the kids' demo, once I had gone around and taught them the song, then I got each of them to tell me where they wanted the spider to sit. So if they said nose, we would make up a verse for nose. Oh, what do you suppose? I've got a spider on my nose. There's a spider on my nose, on my nose. The kids have not fooled me yet. I've been able to make a rhyme for any of the spider's um, verses that they've come up with. But I do like all those other little songs and <clears throat> Little Miss Muffet, I do like this. So I'll put this where you can see my lap. Little Miss Muffet sat on her tuffet, eating her curds and whey. Along came a spider who sat down beside her and frightened Miss Muffet away. I was just in Turkey. And if I'm, I actually taught preschool classes. My last day in Turkey, I got to go to a school and teach the kids. And if you've got fun actions, even if they don't understand English, they followed along incredibly well. So do the motions with me. Little Miss Muffet sat on her tuffet, eating her curds and whey. Along came a spider who sat down beside her and frightened Miss Muffet away. And then I've got Eensy Weensy Spider, crisscross Applesauce. I do on the backs of the kids, criss, cross, and then tap on their shoulders. Applesauce. Spiders crawling up your back. Cool breeze. And then you blow on their neck. Tight squeeze. Grab their shoulders. Now you've got the shiveries and gently do a tickle on their sides. If you have grandchildren, that is a must do with your grandchildren. I do it with my grandchildren often and I limit them to 10 times. That's as many as I will do. So that is spider on the floor and, and some of the spider ones. Uh, Pass the witch's broomstick is a fun game. And in this one, as they, um, as they go out, they sit down. I play the recording and when I stop it, Whoever's got it sits down. And if there's two of them, they both sit down. So 
I don't have to tell you how much fun they were having with this. They were having lots of fun. It's in second grade, but honestly, you can do this with second, third, fourth, fifth. I bet you even your middle school kids would enjoy it. Now, going on to pumpkin fat. And I like pumpkin fat because it's a simple little so me song. It's in kindergarten. And here's the kids playing it. This is actually an older group than kindergarten and they still enjoyed the, doing the song. And they make the scariest face they can at the one who's in the middle. And the one in the middle chooses the scariest pumpkin, one to go pumpkin, in and be the new pumpkin in the middle. <clears throat> and they get a scare as well. So because this is a simple So Me song, we've built an interactive for this one. So Pumpkin Fat, uh, Prepare Sofa is the interactive pattern. So first you sing the song, and I would have the kids show how the notes go higher and lower with arm motions. And then they would do it with the singing and watch Ready, the little pencil. Go. Pumpkin, pumpkin, round and fat. Turn into a jack-o'-lantern just like that. So that is a really important step. I will go on beyond that if I sense that most of the kids understand which is the higher and which is the lower note. If I want to assess quickly the class, I ask them to do it with their eyes shut. And if I see pumpkin, pumpkin, if I see them doing it wrong, we're not ready to go on to the next step. But here is the next step where we connect the notes with to ready show the higher go. and lower Pumpkin, pumpkin, round and fat. And then we'll do the next. Ready, go, turn into a jack-o'-lantern just like that. And then depending on where the kids are at, I might tell them that the higher note is so and the lower note is me. Typically, I don't label that in kindergarten, but that's, um, that's up to you. So... Here's where we figure out the sounds. Pumpkin, pumpkin, that would be the first one. Round and fat, turn into a jack-o'-lantern. Which one would that be? It would be this one, just like that. And so we've done these prepare solfa for, I think, five or six of the reading songs in kindergarten that use just the so and the me. So I quite like the pumpkin fat for that. <clears throat> and if you're using the concept slides, there will be one that talks about the high and the low. So I have in pre-K five little pumpkins. And this one, I made up a little so me melody for it. And if you have or orf instruments in your room, you could get your little pre-case playing a simple Bordune. We'll, um, we'll use the notation video. Five little pumpkins sitting on a gate. The first one said, oh my, it's getting late. The version of five little pumpkins there is a pointing page where you could have the kids point and help them with number recognition the last one from the song list 
that I'm going to mention is brush your teeth. When I was a kid, we had a dentist living across the street and he used to give us toothbrushes for Halloween. And so it's always been important to me to remind the kids that when they've got all that Halloween candy, that they brush their teeth after they've used it. So there is a cute little kids demo here, but let's just listen to a little bit of this one. We'll make up some movements. You gotta brush your teeth in the morning. Brush your teeth at night. Brush and floss them every day. Keep them pearly white. Brush, brush your teeth. Brush them every day. Your teeth are strong and healthy. So let's keep them that way. You gotta and there's your just that little in fill the in the morning and then it then it repeats. So those are some of the songs from the song list that I wanted to feature as highlights because they're lots and lots of fun. Now I'm going to go to Jane Lamb's Orph Arrangements. And <clears throat> Jane's ORF arrangements, especially for three, four, and five, are going to be a really good challenge for your kids. Uh, if I go to instruments, I go to ORF, and then I go to fall. This is where I will find them. So leaves are falling is the first one that we put in, and trick or treat is the second one. So I'm gonna open that full screen. And I'm going to play the melody on recorder because my voice is too croaky to sing in the right key. So grade three to five, simple melody, but look at all the parts that we get to play. If you have bass bars, the kids get to practice doing a tremolo on the bass bars. The bass xylophone part is where I would start teaching with the ORF instruments that I have, because I have a bass xylophone. They're not difficult, there's just a lot of them. And so it'll give lots of your kids opportunities to play. There is a conga part. So bass, bass, tone, tone, tone. I probably put that in last. Let's put in the soprano and alto xylophone part first. So we're going to do. Rest, rest. Rest, rest. And the uh, soprano glock, glock part, don't have my glock out because I only have space for one, is rest, rest. And the alto metallophone part will be the E and the B, and then the B and the E, the inverse. So we'll do the E and the B first. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. And we have these beautiful sonar instruments that really do sound quite gorgeous. <clears throat> I could not find my fiber slab. I know I have one, but couldn't find it. So if you don't have one, or if you can't find yours, substitute. So I'm gonna substitute a tambourine. So one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And then I have my conga here. I'm not the world's greatest drummer by any means. Any of you who watched my lesson with drummer Dan will know that. But we're going to go bass, 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 bass. So all the parts are very doable for your students. There's just more of them than we have in a lot of the music play or for arrangements. So it is going to be a really nice challenge piece. So for the B section, Candy corn, starbursts, millionaires, Reese's pieces, 
Reese's Pieces Nestle Crunch Gummy Bears. Or you get the kids to make up their own. And I'll show you where these cards are. They are in the Halloween unit. So really lovely ORF arrangements. And here is the printable version of this. And you can actually project the printable version. And Jane has done a beautiful job of the teaching suggestions. Her process is wonderful. So you just basically print it out, teach it. This would be a really good challenge piece for any of your third, fourth, or fifth graders. I know if I was doing that with third, I'd probably reduce the number of parts. If I was doing it with fifth, I would really work to try and get all those parts in there. So again, where to find Jane's ORF arrangements, go to Instruments, go to ORF, and then go to Fall. So Trick or Treat is for third, fourth, fifth. Jack-o-lantern is for, um, this is the book this comes from. Uh, Jack-o-lantern is suggested for grades one, two, three, and the parts are considerably simpler and fewer of them. So your one, twos, threes would be quite successful with this one. So again, I'm going to pull it up and go full screen. I'll play the melody, you can sing along. And a nice little boo at the end. So again, there's um, a tremolo on the bass bars, if you have bass bars. I would be teaching the, the bass xylophone part, and that's a nice simple bordoon on the E and the B. And the uh, soprano and alto glockenspiels have a little bit trickier part. might be a bit tricky for your first graders. Leave it out if it is and add it in for your second graders if they're good and your third graders for sure. Um, again, we have a fiber slap here. I wish I had mine. A gong would be really fun to add to this at the end on the big boo. And again, we have this as a projectable and then we have the activities here that you can download and you can print out. So that is the jack-o'-lantern song. And let's see if I can go back to units. Not units, sorry, instruments. And ORF and fall. So there's a song, Look Out. This is for grades three, four, and five. And again, it's in the key of G, so a nice key for kids to sing in, nice key for playing in. And the creating suggestions are going to work really well. The ooh is in, um, again, it's in the key of G. And it's got some nice tremolos and some really interesting parts. And then what will you be? That's kind of like my costume song. Um, and this is for K2. So let's look at the K2. Nice and simple so that your K2s could potentially do this. So it says bass bars. You might do that on your bass xylophone. Just E, 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 E. <clears throat> and then your alto uh, metallophone. E, B, C, B, E, B, C, B. And the melody I will play for you. One. So each student could choose a character that they're going to be, and then they would sing what they're going to be, and they create a motion of their chosen character. So very cute little songs, and 
the supporting resources for these are really, really well written. I'm so grateful that Jane has shared these with us and with the music play teachers. So there's the what will you be on Halloween for K2. If you are not a music play online user, you can order the book seasons and special days from store.musicplay.ca and you will um, be able to, you can get it as a download or you can get it as a print version. And I'm pretty sure that our dealers have this as well. West Music, Music in Motion, uh, JW Pepper have uh, this, this as well. So this is a really, really well-written book. It's for all the seasons throughout the year. Lots of the Halloween ones, um, but then there's some for Christmas, there's some for spring and Valentine's Day and all the fun holidays throughout the year. And if we're lucky, Jane is going to do a webinar for us in the spring. Okay, I wanted to take a quick look at our Halloween unit because there's a wealth of materials in here. So units, festivals and holidays, and then I just have to scroll until I see Halloween. And somehow I always miss it. It comes up quicker. As in all the units, we show all the related songs, but there's a wealth of materials. So if you're looking this year, October is going to actually have five weeks. So we're going to put a fifth lesson in to the learning modules for all grades. And so we'll be making good use of some of these activities. So the Halloween treat rondo is, is here. This is the worksheet part of it. There is an interactive as well. And what we want the kids to do is to be able to figure out the rhythms of the candies. And if I print them out and I put them in a bag, then I can use these for composing. So I might uh, use the melody below as the theme of your rondo. On the next page, create B and C sections with treats. Decide how to perform the B and C sections using body percussion or unpitched instruments. Try out your performance. Do you like it? If not, make, make changes. So our theme is candy apples, oh so sweet. Give me something good to eat. That is the non-Halloween version. Or you could do Halloween apples if you can do um, Halloween in your school. So I'm going to put this down so you can see. So I've got Life Savers Crispy Crunch. Reese's Pieces, Mars. And I could decide what instruments I'm going to play that on. I'm going to shake my first three, and then I'm going to play the drum on the last one. Life Savers, Crispy Crunch, Reese's Pieces, Mars. Life Savers, Crispy Crunch, Reese's Pieces, Mars. So you can try this out with your kids. You can teach it using the interactive life savers. I don't have crispy crunch in here, but I've got Kit, Cat, Snickers, Twix. So you could do this as a class activity first, and then you print out the little things, and you can divide your kids into groups and have each of them create their own little Halloween treat rhythm composition. So this is all in the Halloween treat rhythm. Here are the treat cards. I've printed mine in color and I do actually like them in color. We don't always do these in color because it's expensive to print, but you could um, create them. And then I package them up in these little CD envelopes. And as long as I have the, um, the picture facing out, I know which activity this is that I have, that I have done. So that is Halloween Treat Rondo, and that's in units, festivals and holidays, and here is Halloween. So there's lots of worksheets that you can give your students. 
and I've printed them out. I'm going to stop sharing so I can show them and you can see them a little bit bigger. So this is the Smelly Brew Worksheet, and it's a worksheet to figure out what rhythms it is. Frogs' legs would be ta ta. And these, these kinds of little worksheets are great for extras. And we've tried to keep this one um, non-Halloween. Frogs' legs, two spiders, hairy eyeballs, fingernails. We have the cards to cut out. And then you could ask the kids to choose eight or to choose 16 and create a word rhythm composition with them. So that is the smelly brew set of worksheets. We have Pumpkin Rhythm Create. And this worksheet has different rhythm patterns on the pumpkins. Again, I would cut those out. I would put them in a Ziploc or in a little uh, CD envelope. And then I'd have the kids create rhythm compositions with those, decide what instruments they were going to play them on, and they would take turns going around the room. You could make up a little song to be your theme, or you could simply play the, the little compositions. This is a little assessment. Can your littles, can your grade ones and twos tell you if, a, if, if it's one sound or two? And this one, I'd probably project and go over it with the kids first because they can't read yet. Grade two and three, this would be better. Black, flashlight, candle, carve. So yes, this is probably a little much for most first grade classes, but certainly your second grade classes could do this. This one is completely non-Halloween. It's fall rhythms. So they choose the word from down below and then they decide where it goes. Red would be under the ta rest. Apples would be ta ta. If you have to have a sub in during October, these would make great sub plans. So dynamics, and this is to review and practice. And the idea with these is that um, they learn how to put the dynamics in order. We don't have um, a lot of time signature worksheets in the theory unit yet. So these Halloween ones are actually a really good time for your fifth, your sixth graders to go over time signatures with them. And it's themed to go with Halloween. So time signature mania, it explains it. The number on the top tells how many beats are in each measure of music. Number on the bottom tells what kind of note gets one beat. And then they have some work to complete. This is another good worksheet for your older kids. Tricky tempo terms. It's a little crossword puzzle. And again, these make great subplans. So number one or number three across fast and lively. I think that would probably be A-L-L-E-G-R-O, Allegro. And the answers are given in a little box at the bottom. So it makes it easier for the kids to complete. This one is a word search. And again, the answers are given at the bottom. I don't want kids just doing word search because to me, that's not a very meaningful educational activity. But when they have to actually tell what it means, that makes it more meaningful. So the word search, tell what it means, answers given at the bottom. This is a really fun activity. This is Halloween sound effects. So we've got an interactive that has lots of different sound effects. And if you've got instruments that make interesting sound effects, I would add them to the list. I really like my thunder tube. So rather than using the thunder effect here, I would rather actually use the instrument that does it. This is where the instruments that you collect can make some really fun things. And even things like a tambourine could do it. So there is a worksheet and there's an exemplar. Escape that. A lot of teachers last year had mentioned that their kids really enjoyed this particular activity. So this is the sound effects. So Monster in the Closet is the exemplar that our team made up. And here is the worksheet. 
And this is the interactive to create the story. I would do that third, fourth, fifth. It's it's fun. And again, I would encourage them to go beyond the interactive sounds that we have and, and to find their own. Uh, what do you know about bats? We saw that when we did the bats song and the turkey tempos are additional worksheets. Sorcerer's Apprentice, we have a listening glyph for this. In a listening glyph, if you think the tempo is slow, you color it orange. If you think it's medium, green. Yellow, fast. And so there's one with the sorcerer, there's one with the monster. But the idea is you play the Sorcerer's Apprentice and then the kids color and they color what they hear. They color the dynamics that they hear. Dance Macabre was done by Dana Hero and she's done it with glow sticks. And she has slides that explain everything that she does. The party host plays his violin, skeletons arrive. The skeletons arrive, listen to the bones. And you can go through these slides with your kids. And then Dana, Dana has done a really um, good demonstration of this as well. So you can download this and practice it with your kids. So here is the demo. And Dana walks you through it. So it's not all that difficult to, um, to do. And again, many teachers commented how much they had enjoyed that activity last year. Looking for Dracula, um, we had Tracy Stenner and Christy Noble do a webinar for us in 2020. And Looking for Dracula is one of the favorites that they shared. But I want to share with you the cup game to the Monster Mash. So you can do it with a cup. Tracy has this cute little pumpkin that she does it with. I awesome found an orange bean bag. The verses, we'll be doing the pattern. But find something that you can use for a cup. And during COVID, we weren't passing anything. So it was just done as individuals. But I would challenge your students to get the pass in um, with the A section after they've learned how to do it. I'm going to stop there so that we have time for some questions. Yeah, hi. Uh, so I actually only have one question for you, and it is about Music Play Online in general, not about Halloween. Sure. Um, can you show how to download an accompaniment track, please? Certainly. So I'll go to the song list, and I will go to, well, it doesn't matter what song I go to. I'll go to Doobie Doobie Doo. You scroll down. I apologize, you don't scroll down. It's at the top now. And then I just have to click here and it downloads. And if I don't have that little button, I can click here and I can download. So it, it's as simple as that. And that's the same for every song in the song list. So download and the alternative way is, is to download, but it's very quick and easy. I hope everybody has a fun October, and I hope we've given you lots of alternatives if you're in a school where you can't do Halloween, but you can still have the fun with the minor keys and the, the minor themes. Thank you so much to uh, Jane Lamb for joining us. I hope I did your pieces justice, Jane. Um, and uh, we're very excited to have them on Music Play Online, and we'll be adding the Christmas ones as we get closer to December so that you will have more Jane Lamb wonderful arrangements to challenge your third, fourth, and fifth. Thanks so much. Thanks for coming and joining me. Thank you for sharing your time with us today. If you would like to earn a PD certificate for this episode, download the accompanying handout, or watch the webinar, please go to workshops.musicplay.ca. See you next time. It's time.